Okay, so what we're going to do is get the LCD here, and somebody gave that to me, x plus 3 times x plus 4. So let me do that, x plus 3 times 2 over x plus 4, this way. I'll multiply this by x plus 4 over x plus 4, and this by x plus 3 over x plus 3. I still want to know where that's less than or equal to zero. Well, I've got a common denominator, so that gives me x plus 4. And here I'm going to distribute not only the 2, but the negative and the 2. So that's going to be minus 2x minus 6 over x plus 4 times x plus 3. In the numerator, let's combine like terms. When I combine like terms in the numerator, what do I get? Negative x minus 2. OK. Do you remember what happens at this point? I need to find where the numerator equals 0 which is minus x minus 2 equals 0. If I move the x to the side, it becomes positive. So it's when x is negative 2. Denominator equals 0. I hope you can just read those off to me. Prove me right. Perfect. Thank you. Negative 4 and negative 3. Let's put these numbers on the number line. Now this is a nice example because it's going to make you think a little bit outside the box. Now I know that everyone wants to test points right here and now, but I made a different suggestion when we did this in class. I said before you get around to testing points, do this first. What was it? Yeah, write the intervals. So that's negative infinity to negative 4 negative 4 to negative 3, negative 3 to negative 2, and negative 2 to infinity. The reason I want you to write the intervals is because if you don't, when you do all your test points, you're going to go back and look at this and go, oh, okay, and you're going to mix up these endpoints with your test points and give me the wrong intervals. You've got your answers here. It's just a matter of determining which one's which. I need some test points. Negative 5. Negative 3 and a half. Negative 2 and a half. And 0. Perfect. Perfect. So these are our test points. All right. Now, not a bad idea to practice this with our graphic calculators. I'm going to take this expression and put it into my graphing calculator. So let's be careful as we do that. Oops. So I'm just going to clear out this. I would recommend that you use the second, excuse me, the alpha key, then the y equals key and your calculator's ability to do a fraction. Jason, you're going to have to use double parentheses in the denominator. It'll still work out the same on your 83, but you know it's not as convenient. So this is negative x minus 2 divided by parentheses x plus 3 times x plus 4. I'm also going to trust that you still have your graphing calculator set up the right way. That it is with the table settings like mine right here. If not, make sure that independent is set to ask and dependent is set to auto. To get to those settings, you hit the second key, then the window key. Assuming your, your settings are great and your window, excuse me, your function is all set, you can go to the graph and then well, hit second and then graph, which takes you to the table. And there you go. Except we need to test our own values, not these 
that are given to us or left over from my last class. So negative 5, negative 3.5, negative 2.5, and then 0. Now the important thing is not that I got 3 halves or negative 6 or 2 thirds. What's the important information that I'm getting here? Negative, positive, negative, positive, that kind of stuff. So this one happens to alternate signs, positive, negative, positive, negative. Let's look back at the, the problem. Which one do I want, positive or negative? Negative. Negative. All right, so let's see. It was positive, negative, positive, negative. So I want the negative ones, so that's going to be those two. Because this is a less than or equal to, you've got to be careful about which endpoints you include. Now, including them means using a bracket. Which one's going to get the bracket? Let's test it out. Your calculator can actually tell you. So if you type in negative 2, you end up with a 0. Well, is 0 less than or equal to 0? Is that true? Yeah, so you can use the negative 2. But what about negative 3? No, can't use that one. Negative 4? No, can't use that one either. Those give you a 0 in the denominator. You can't divide by 0, so that's it. Done. So overall, your answer should look like negative 4 to negative 3 union negative 2 with a bracket to infinity with a parenthesis. There's two points right here for getting the parenthesis correct on both of these endpoints. And then I guess another one there too. So you definitely want to pay attention to what's happening there. Remember, you can test your endpoints there with no problem. All right. Let's do another one that you should be ready for for the exam. <laughs> yeah, you can you you can use it. Yeah, because if you put in a negative two, you end up with a zero here, and zero is less than or equal to zero. That's true, so I can use that point because it satisfies the inequality there. It makes it true. They don't work because they will give you a zero in the denominator and you can't divide by zero. So when you when you tried putting those in in your graphing calculator, it just said error. I didn't like it. Yeah. I mean you just you just want to avoid the points that are in the denominator. Yeah. So you can just put those in parentheses automatically. I, I, I wanna help you understand as, as exactly why, but I mean, you're right, right. All right, good. Uh, let's see if I've got another one here. Um, I think we visited this one the other day. Um, yeah. Yeah, if you would actually look at the graph, you would see an asymptote at that point. So, um, yeah, let's see. Uh, I mean, the, trying to do this one based on the graphs is difficult because you have to have a little bit of skill in graphing these things. Y equals um, parentheses negative x um, minus 2 divided by um, x plus 4, x plus 3. I mean, I don't know how informative the graph is to you. I mean, I guess I'm a little bit more used to these things, but... Um, I mean, you could solve it with the graph, but it's, it's just tough. It's just tough. But yeah, you're right. You are getting vertical asymptotes at negative 4 and negative 3. Those are your vertical asymptotes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let me go back to Desmos for the next one. Um, unless I can, well, let's see if I can find it here. Um... Yeah, this one. Uh, you. 
This is a good one. I gave it to you the other day. I'm not sure. Do we finish this one in class or not? Do you remember? Yeah, this is this is problem H. All right. So let's go through it now. Um, this has got a lot of juicy stuff that you should be able to do for an exam. And one of the things I want to highlight is that some of the crucial points are given to you here. And there's actually one that I probably would like to have given to you, but I didn't in this one. I hope the, those of you at home could see this okay, especially these left-hand endpoints. So the first thing is to figure out, well, what's the domain? Well, the domain is your set of X coordinates, right? So the domain would start where? Negative four. Yeah, so negative four to four would be the domain. Now, assuming that this is a closed endpoint, then you would use brackets on the domain, negative four to four. How about the range? What would be the range? Yes, negative 38.25 to 6.67. So good job on the range. Brackets or parentheses for those? All right, so domain of negative 4 to 4, the range, negative 38.25 to 6.67. By the way, be careful about how you give me these numbers. Uh, I am going to be a little bit picky. If you mix these orders up, well... Let's just say you better hope that my favorite sports team is won over the weekend while I'm grading your paper. <laughs> All right, that's wrong. So, I mean, maybe I'll be a little bit charitable, maybe I won't, but the best thing is just to get it right. It's always left to right, bottom to top, lowest to highest. All right, they should be in the correct order. Let's go back here. Uh, what else we got? Is this a function? Yes. Good, it is a function. Someone else tell me why. Why is this a function? Passes, yes, passes the vertical line test. So it's a function because it passes the VLT, vertical line test. Nice. Uh, what else we got? Local minimums. Um, this is a local minimum. You can kind of have to guesstimate a little bit on that one. I left off the coordinates there. I also should have put the coordinates here. I like that one. Um, <clears throat> so, I don't know, I'm guessing, uh, since this little interval is negative, you know, represents a distance of negative five, I'm going negative two, roughly, you know, that's fine. If, if I'm leaving you to guess, you know, your minimum point, so your local min, would be y equals negative 2. How about the local max? What would the local max be? It's like negative 4. Mm. Yeah, something a little less than 5. I'm not going to be terribly picky. If you give me a local max of 5, I'd be kind of unhappy because it's below the line for five. It's completely below that line. But, you know, if you gave me four and a half, 4.9, 4.1, 4.8, you know, I don't care. I'm gonna give you some range. I'm gonna give you some slack in there. But, so the local max would be about four. And that's what this little squiggly equal sign is. It means about that much. Keep in mind, I'm looking for the Y coordinates there. Uh, decreasing. So it's decreasing until it gets to this point. But when you talk about decreasing and increasing, it's coordinates on the x-axis. So it's decreasing from negative 4 to negative 3. Negative 4 to negative 3. Now, if this were web assigned, I think they'd want a bracket on the negative 4. Um, personally, I'm not really fond of that, but that's the way it is. Then it starts increasing until we get to what? 
Good. Increasing from negative 3 to negative 1. <clears throat> then it's decreasing all the way down until you get to positive 3. So, um, so from negative 1 to 3. The difficult part for you to resist is the temptation to put in y coordinates here. This has nothing to do, your answer has nothing to do with the y coordinates. Sydney? Can you repeat the definitions of local min and local max? I just want to put it It's just uh, a point that is lower than anything near it, or a point that's anything higher than anything near it. So these are local mins, or this one's a local min. This one's a local min. If you wanted to be very, very precise about this, this would be an absolute min because the function doesn't get any lower than this period. Whereas over here, yeah, the function does get lower than this for a lot of points, but it's lower than anything near it. So Ella and then Jesse. Um, going back to the like increasing and decreasing, I, I get messed up if I'm using parentheses or brackets, like in that situation. Yeah, so in my way of thinking, for this course, I would just use parentheses for everything. The only time that you're going to get mixed up and have to use brackets is if you're dealing with the endpoint on these intervals. That's the only brackets you're going to see. And that's really just for WebAssign. If you gave me parentheses uh, for all this stuff, increasing and decreasing, I'm happy. I'm happy. Yeah. So, Jess. Um. On an exam, if you're only asking for the local minimums and local maximums, if we include the absolute min or max? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to worry about that if you include those. I mean, at some point, you're going to have to distinguish between an absolute max and an absolute min and a local min and a local max, those kind of things. But, I mean, for right now, I mean, just finding them. So, for this problem, I guess I'd be looking for you know, a local min at negative three, local max at negative one, um, and then the y values accordingly. I mean, if you want to give me a local min there, that's fine. If you wanted to give me a local max here, okay, I'm fine with that. And technically, this is a local max as well, because it's bigger than anything near it. But, you know, in my mind, it's bigger than anything near it because you're cutting off the function. But it's still, it's actually, it's an ab absolute max. It's bigger than anything near it. All right. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, good question. Increasing and decreasing are reported in terms of your values along the x-axis. So I had just gotten over here because I wanted to, you know, highlight along the x-axis where it's increasing and where it's decreasing. So for instance, it starts decreasing here, and it keeps on decreasing until you get to here. So in terms of the x-axis, it's decreasing from negative 1 to 3. And then what happens? Well, then it starts increasing. So it's increasing from 3 to 4. Uh, it was also increasing from negative 3 to negative 1. So it's always in intervals along the x-axis. Now, I don't think we got a chance to do it here today, but uh, another thing I would make sure I could do is graph a piecewise function. So you might want to review that. And then what else here? Um, some other stuff we did. Uh, tables, which one? Um, there's something else we did the other day that I wanted to. This one's a good one, but there's, there's another one that we did. Yeah, this one. Uh, there was two things we did with this graph. First of all, we found out where these two graphs crossed each other. And then we found out where one was taller than the other one. So the second one in particular, we answered in intervals along the x-axis. So make sure you can solve a problem like this. I mean, that's, that's setting you up for later courses and helping you out with your calculator skills so you can, you can nail those. Now you can do this on Desmos or you can do it on 
uh, graphing calculator. Doesn't bother me. If you're going to do it on Desmos, then during the test, you need to have Desmos test mode downloaded. And what you'll do is you'll start that at the beginning of the test. And at the end of the test, you'll bring your phone up to me and show me that you've been on Desmos the whole time by hitting the stop button in front of me. Don't hit the stop button at your desk. Bring it up to me and show me that you're stopping it right when you get there. Um, Desmos does make a problem like this pretty easy. X cubed plus 4x squared. I think that was one of their functions. And then what was the other one? Uh, negative 1 plus 3 plus 5. So negative x squared. Uh, squared. Ah, squ how about a squared? There we go. Squared plus 3x plus 5. So remember it took a little bit of skill here to realize that, oh, they intersect down here. There we go. Now we got it. These are the points of intersection, and you can decide where the graph is less than or greater than the other one um, just by looking at it. And then give me your answers in intervals along the x axis. Jesse? Um, can you use our graphing calculator and the Desmos test mode? Yep. Okay. You, can use, you can use them both simultaneously. So if you want one and the other, no problem. If you need to borrow a graphing calculator, that's fine. Uh, make sure you get in early. I've only got so many of them. Ella? Um, will you be like, will you be able to help remind us what buttons that we're trying to come To an extent. To an extent, I'll help out. I mean, some of this I'm hoping that you've already learned. So, you know, but, you know, if, if you're making a mistake or here's a very common mistake that um, happens to people when they try and graph something. Um, they hit the graph key. Uh, let's see. Now this one's actually working. But a lot of times you'll accidentally turn on a plot and it'll say, oh, dimension zero or something like that. And it won't plot for you. Um, here, let me clear that out. Enter. Um, now let's try and graph this one. Um, no, I guess still still doing that. All right, but a lot of times when you do these problems, it just won't graph it for you because you've got this plot turned on accidentally. And if I see something like that, or down here, very common error is to use the subtraction key to put in a negative when you really should be using the opposite key on the bottom row of your calculator. So if I try and graph it now, yeah, it gives me an error. So those kind of things I'll help out with, but I mean, some of the stuff... Uh, I'm hoping that you've gotten pretty comfortable with. Um, oh, the one last thing I didn't mention here, uh, powers of I. You should definitely know those. And some of the stuff that we went over today. Um, we went over uh, increasing at an increasing rate, um, slopes of functions, and uh, what else? Um, Oh, yeah, net, net change versus average rate of change. Yeah, definitely know the difference between those two. Okay, have a good couple days. Remember, your homework is due before the test on Tuesday. So, in fact, I think it's due at 10 a.m. because I have to send it, well, maybe it's due at 1230. I don't know. Check it out online and see ya.